Alec, you've elected to bowl first. What's the thinking there? Well, we just say, I think it'll be a fair wicket, but it's a little bit of live grass still, a little bit of moisture, and I think uh, the bowlers will have a good chance early on. But, you know, the idea is obviously to, to ideally bowl them out in the day, or, you know, at worst, probably have them seven down at close of play. Um, and I'll admit, first of all, the wicket didn't do quite as much as we all felt. When we got there, there's a lot of grass on it. It was live grass, and we expected it to seam around a little bit. After about 20 minutes of, of the game, we obviously realised it wasn't going to seam about as much. But saying that, we still felt it was the right decision to, to bowl first. This time he's gone. Right-hander Liebenberg goes to Darren Goff, outside edge to Stewart. Oh, he's out. This is very angry, Gary Kirsten. He really did try and pull the bat away. It's just hit the inside edge. Similar dismissal at Lords for Gary Kirsten. Hooked away, great shot, great shot. Got him, that square leg. It was a good shot, except it went in the air. He picked it up off his hip quite brilliantly and had it going away, he thought past square leg. But in fact, Angus Fraser has picked up the wicket. Good shot, beautiful shot. It was almost as if he was waiting for it. The bouncer, the short ball like that, is supposed to be a surprise ball, but uh, Asik Cronier was on the back foot, ready, waiting. Thank you very much. Well, well, well. He, was, um, he decided that before he went. Four runs over the top. Pull that away pretty well. In fact, very well. That's cleared the ropes. But that was, I think you've got to give credit to Anzi Cronje, the way he took, it took to Ian Salisbury. I mean, he took a gamble early on by coming down the wicket and he sliced one over mid-on. I mean, it could have been a different ball game if that had gone into his hands. I mean, Solly could have been full of confidence and he could have ripped through him himself. But um, he decided to, to get into the leg spinner like he did in the winter. You know, so against Australia, and uh, and that's the reason they got that many runs in the first day. That's through, and it's found the inside edge. So Andy Flintoff has his first Test wicket. England have the breakthrough that was uh, seeming to pass them by. Uh, it's nicely placed. It's in good form now. That wasn't a fierce hit by Hansi Cronier. He's really just laid himself on top of it, and he's reached his half century with a delightful shot. Well, I thought there was a lot of inside edge on that, but he's given it. Well, it might just have been the sound. Angus Fraser gets his reward for an excellent spell of fast medium bowling. Oh, good shot. Dominic Cork hoping that ball would just swing a bit, but uh, it didn't. Four runs. I mean, it was a bad first day. We didn't bowl very well, by and large. Uh, the pitch, whilst it was green, was pretty dry. Uh, there wasn't that much in the pitch. Uh, but still, they would have fancied their chances. Good shot. Cronje had previously had a a disappointing record against England, so for him to play so well against us again was disappointing for us. Once again, outswing, but this is dealt with quite beautifully by the South African captain. He eased himself into the cover drive and has reached 100. I felt in the first two or three years of my career, I came up with the odd 100. Um, I made five up until March 95, but I felt that I've been more consistent over the last two or three years and consistently uh, chipped in, unfortunately not being able to make it into a big one. Um, I'm glad that after three and a half years I finally got to three figures again. Uh, and thankful to, to those people that stuck by me during that time. Oh, but he's too good for him. He's produced a beauty. Yeah, interestingly, they lost seven wickets on that first day. I mean, they got 300, but we got seven of them out. Um, and to win the Test match, we had to get them out twice. So, although we didn't bowl very well, and they had the best of the first day. I felt that 
it'd been a bad day for us, but we got out of jail a little bit by getting seven wickets. Even though they did get 3.30 the first day, we had seven wickets, and that was a big that was a big plus for us. And we we knew if we were finishing off the next morning, we had a great chance. Had to go away to his right hand side. And that was very well done. The South Africans, their way of um, getting out of trouble is to hit their way out of trouble. And it's, it's a way you've got to respect, really. And uh, Elworthy on debut, chances on, and he got 48, 49, whatever it may have been, and played well. And uh, they, they hit plenty of boundaries. Um, but saying that, we we're always trying to, to keep control and take wickets. And it's not always easy when someone comes in and, and flays the bat. But, uh, you know, eventually we got him out. Room for cash, the catcher. Well, I suppose you'd say it worked. <laughs> In the court, second time, beautiful catch, though. Super catch by Hick. That's a splendid performance from South Africa. Eventually, England got through them, but uh, to go from 302 to 374 and do it in quick time was a very good performance. Elworthy scored uh, quite fast out there, 48 in quick time. That's a good stroke from uh, Mike Witcher. And it's good to see Mark Butcher come in. Obviously disappointed to see him miss two test matches with a broken thumb. But has come into the opening berth. It's a good understanding with Michael. I mean, Michael, tremendous player. And he, I wouldn't say he's taken him under his wing, but he's coached him into international cricket. And uh, having spoken with Butcher, I know how much he appreciates Michael's help. But to form a, a good opening partnership, certainly the basis of a very good side. I think the left-handed, right-handed partnership thing worked quite well. Um, and in test cricket, opening batsmen are as important as opening bowlers because they set a platform for the team. Wonderful shots. Really did make that look uh, perfectly simple. Beautiful shot, right out the screws, as they'd say in Australia. Middled away perfectly by Mike Allerton. Catch! He's uh, pumped that away on the leg side. The crucial stage uh, after T for South Africa is that he's thrown Alan Dolan in there. It's got an outside edge, and that's gone. And I Donald thought that Alan Donald. And, and again, you, there are pictures of me and Alex Stewart sat on the balcony. And if I said it once, I must have said it ten times. He's coming again. He's here again. You know, and, and I clock up the overs. I keep looking at, at the Cracker Jack performers in the opposition. And they're clocking overs up in a five-match series. That's another he's clocked up. And that's another. And when they're into the realms of 30-plus overs on a regular basis, that will take its toll. But full marks to him who I think is a terrific bloke and um, you know if there's one one chap it's a question that you get asked if you had a player in their team who would you like well yeah, yeah thanks very much um, he would be terrific because he's a top class performer world class and, and his world class pedigree comes through by the number of times he keeps coming back at you well that's out he stayed there a long time as if he'd played and missed, but it's a, a wafting bat at a wide ball. You know, we've had these little collapses, which we're prone to at times. Hopefully we will get rid of that problem uh, sooner rather than later. Um, but yeah, there is still you know, a fair total. 3 4 odd is competitive. And, uh, you know, it could have been more, could have got 4 50, you never know. But take things as they are, near enough all square, and do well in the third and fourth innings of that game. Although we would have looked for a lead, meant that we got 330 we were pretty much on level terms with them for the first half of the game so the pitch was reduced to one in this match it wasn't going to deteriorate it's going to be a pretty good pitch to bat last on um, so I wasn't too worried about the fact that we, we had a bit of a collapse I thought uh, the game was progressing it was a game we had to win um, and that to win it we had to bowl them out for a reasonable total second time round, which we duly did It looked as though it had every chance of being out there, even from this distance. Mark Ramprakash unbeaten on 67. 
and that's his highest test match score in England. And a very good innings it was too. 67 not out there and the total for England 336. Came out and just bowled all three of his bowl well. And that, that evening and the next day and Angus Fraser to get 10 in the game was a, was a great effort. Oh, that was close. That out, that out. Steve Dunn, the umpire, took his time. It was an, un an un South african like performance. Normally they're pretty disciplined. They normally try and, the way they play cricket is to try and not give you a sniff in the game and then go for the win. They try and close the game down. Um, so that's why I felt, I remember the odds in the middle of the game were very much against us at the bookies, but I felt it was the kind of test match we might beat them in because uh, somehow the game was progressing too quickly for their liking. They don't like test matches where uh, it hangs in the balance. They like to be well in control of the game, try and snuff you out the game. Um, so I was pretty confident that it was a game we'd do well in. Yep. This time, the kitchen had uh, a less difficult opportunity there. I mean, Angus bowled tremendously well throughout the whole series, but particularly pleased for Corky. Um, he'd be the first to hold his hand up and say first innings at Trent Bridge, he bowled indifferently. He showed a lot of character, a lot of guts in the way he came back and thoroughly deserved the wicket haul he got. Alex Stewart had to go a long way across in front of first slip to take the catch. Nancy Cronje looking for the guide down to third man. And Alex Stewart, well, that's a terrific catch. Just held in his uh, first two fingers. That's out. Comfortably caught. Absolutely no doubt about this one for Nasser Hussein. Angus Fraser just does that steady job for you, which you know you can rely on him. And uh, he did it that game. He didn't do all magnificently. And he got 10 wickets in a match. Um, and that just shows that you do need somebody like that in the team. Guess you know, he, he's trudged in all summer and, you know, you see the footprints at the end of the five days. I'm sure there was oil in some of them, the, the amount of times, you know, the 18 stoner came in. And I think it goes back to British Lions. Cap for you is five. Victory for us is what really matters. And you get that from Fraser. He does the simple things well. He does what he does, which is bowl the line and the length. He's not a big swinger of the ball. He, you know, he's not the quickest bowler in the world, but he does what he does well. And he's a wholehearted cricketer. Um, and there's a lot to be said for that. And the match situation, with uh, the one innings to go, England need 247 to win, with South Africa having made 374 and 208. 248, yeah, it was going to be hard. Again, against a top quality attack, and it needed an innings or two innings of substance to make sure we got there. And Michael played what I would say one of the best innings of his test career, which took us through to victory. Yeah, there were things in our favour. I mean, the pitch we started green a little bit like at Christchurch against New Zealand a couple of years before meant that it wasn't really deteriorating for the quicker bowlers. There was a bit of spin there, but you know, we weren't too worried about, about the spin. Um, Donald and Pollock were the main threat, um, and it was a pretty good surface to play them on. That's a beautiful strike. Nailed all pro, who, who don't like anybody liking him. <laughs> Abiton, he's quite happy to be um, unsung hero, but what a performer he is. And to think back of people who say, will he get in the team? 5,000 test runs, captain in England 50 times. Will he get in the team? It'd take a lot to keep him out. And does he love a battle? To put him alongside Alan Donald, and there's a test series going on, and you're actually in the middle of a game, but there's a private little battle in itself. And I love that pure test cricket personally. That, that's a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, we've got a game, but I want to watch this as well. And he's the one chap that with a, a, a new ball and a big fella and a good pitch uh, would relish that challenge. Yeah, it was um, an important part of the game because they're pushing for the victory, we're pushing for the victory, so the two forces are coming together. And it was important from our point of view that we withheld and withstood that particular barrage on that evening. Vicious, really, really vicious. Straight, right at the target, which uh, in this instance was the head. There's a lot of quick bowlers around, and when you're opening batsmen, um, you find occasionally you, there's periods where the fast bowler turns the heat upon you. And, that was a particular occasion. 
and as I say, it was important from our team that I you know, with, withheld the, um, the five or six over spell. Though. The contest between Alan Donald and, and Athers was, was a big one. And for Athers to come through that and have won that little contest gave not just him, but the whole dressing room a lot of hope. It may have just taken the edge off South Africa's play a little bit, but they knew if they took two early wickets on the Monday morning, they were right back in it. But fortunately, Athers carried on where he left off the night before with great support from NASA. Yeah, the forecast was good, the wicket was good, there was no rush. Um, as I say, I felt we'd drawn this thing the night before, uh, but we still had to do the hard work to get to the total. And it's always easier for somebody like Alec to come in guns blazing when there's just 40 or 50 to win. It would have been very difficult for him to come in that situation if we'd have needed 130, 140 to win and the bowlers had been fresh and that kind of thing. So um, really it was a case of again trying to set the platform up. Okay, Abbott has gone to a half century. Very, very good innings from the former England captain. That was quick. Steve Elworthy is the bowler now, and that's pulled away beautifully. The rack of the bat. square leg, and it will go for four. Didn't quite time it as he would have wished, nor did the ball get up as much as uh, Jack Cullis would have liked. A beautiful shot. Abbott has played that wonderfully well. Fifty for Nasser Hussain. There's two good innings out there. Atherton is on 77 and now Nasser Hussain in the middle half century. Ah, oh, beautiful. That's in front of square. It was a quick delivery, but Atherton just sailed into it. What a catch. What an absolutely brilliant catch. I mean, to be honest, I just went out there to bat normally. Uh, I know I hit or swept the first ball for four off Paul Adams. Um, but it's one of those, I'm just going to try and play my normal way. Uh, but you get into a little uh, zone, as they call it, when you suddenly see the ball well, and their balls to be hit. And fortunately, they went for four. And wandered off 40-odd not out and left poor Athers 90-odd not out. It was a great day. I mean, and the way, the way they played, uh, the batsman was brilliant. And then Alex Stewart, to go in like that and finish it, it was absolutely unbelievable, but I was, um, I had my toenail done as we needed about 10 to win and, and I was on the balcony in the end and they were all popping champagne and, and everybody was by accident treading on me, on my shoe and on my foot and I just had my toenail taken off because I found it hard to bowl in the second innings there with, with a bruised nail. We had a little chat, about 15 runs out when, uh, you know, I'd obviously scored the majority of the runs in this partnership we had. I said to Athers, I said, look, I think he needed five at the time, with 15 required. I said, look, I'll just play for you. You get your 100, you deserve it. He just said, look, winning's more important, which, true to his word, he's a great team man, Athers. And it'd have been nice to have got 100, but at the same time, it's the most important thing is to win the game. And he likes a little not out. It upped his average, so he's more than happy. Well, he needs to get three. That's all they'll take. That's the victory. Atherton stays on 98, not out. I ought to have perhaps got one in the first innings. A sloppy shot got me out there. Only got 50 odd, but you know, felt I should have progressed to more. Um, and in the end, I wasn't too fussed about missing out in the second innings. I batted for a long time, and I was happy to see the total whittled away uh, rather than you know go for the personal milestone. None of the lads could stay around and go for. A a beer really or, or a drink and celebrate because they all had games to play uh, so it was a case of packing bags but it wasn't the same as Old Trafford I thought Old Trafford was more of a celebration and Trent Bridge was like yeah we knew we could do it boys see we've done it we're in the series we can go to Weddon Lee and now we can win it and uh, so it was pack your bags and go home and, and get ready for the next one